Welcome to the Pump and Dump channel, talking today again about the shipping industry. So I'm going to make a video today talking again about uh, shipping stocks, uh, Tacos Energy Navigation and Nordic American Tankers. So before getting into Tacos Energy Navigation, I'm just going to repeat what I kind of did last week. I sold on Wednesday, unfortunately, towards the lows here, you know, somewhere around 350 something and um, I switched into Tacos Energy Navigation at 362 that would have been uh, somewhere around here on that day so what it comes down to is overall I left about 8% of, of the money available in this move on the table I could have had 8% more money and switched into Tacos Energy Navigation with as you can see a better you know a better price ratio so um, another thing interesting to look at is the daily performance. How did Nordic American tankers perform? It was very bullish on the open, moved up to five, 445 and then it just melted completely and on the day it's kind of been flat at uh, plus 0.6%. Um, 8 million shares which is not quite but somewhere around uh, 3.5 to 4 times the average volume. Um, Tacos Energy Navigation, it's done six percent, um, up twenty-three cents on uh, six, m on almost seven hundred thousand shares, which is almost three and a half times the average volume. So on the day, Tacos Energy Navigation has outperformed Nordic American tankers. If you think about it, the volume here pushing up the price—that's kind of indicative of strength in the market rather than weakness. If you look at uh, you know this volume here leading to you know almost no gains, it is more of an indication that people are exiting whilst other people are piling in. So you have the euphoria against the reason. A reasonable sellers are people who assume that uh, forty-five thousand dollars per day on the Zeus Max uh, is up overly optimistic. Anything above forty-five thousand is overly optimistic, is what they are saying. And the people buying are saying, oh, I don't care. I mean, look at the spot rates. We're at, uh, who knows, one million <laughs> per day or something like that. Or we're going to go to a million per day. And uh, those people are just like um, buying uh, because, you know, it, there's a bull market on the way and it's, the message has kind of arrived to them. And now they're piling in and, uh, you know, we will see if it now goes up another 50% or if it goes uh, up 100% or if it goes down from here. We will see. Um, in the long term, I think the key thing to to consider is that they have built up a lot of debt over the last couple of years in this downturn here. They wanted to stay exposed to the spot market and they kind of made up for the shortfalls that came from losing all that money uh, day by day with borrowing more and more money. And, you know, when I kind of got involved with them uh, in, what was it, 2014, I guess, um, they had almost no no debt on their balance sheet and uh, now they have so much on their balance sheet it's uh it's very sad very sad uh, the ceo back in the day when i you know when i was uh, when i got invested he was talking about um on on like one of the first conference calls they didn't uh, they didn't do one for quite a long time but then they started doing conference calls again and the ceo was um he was kind of talking about the debt and the other you know, analysts were asking why don't they take on debt to grow the company uh, rather than issuing shares and then he was talking about how the debt just never goes away and uh, you know, talking about the risks. So uh, the CEO was not in favor of debt but I think given the bear market over the last couple of years the, they had to take on a lot of debt to maintain their strategy of being exposed to the spot market. So what will they do with these um, these cash flows that are coming in is the question. I think that the the thing that they will probably do and should do if they want to remain in business over the longer term is to repay some of the debt, uh, get the debt levels down. Uh, the question is, of course, if they do if they do elect to um, pay out a huge dividend to reward their shareholders, they will be. Um, you know, in my opinion, that would kind of lead to an outcome where they won't have the money to repay the debt because, the, you know, the tanker rates over the long term, they will go back down, obviously, after they move up now. But, uh, you know, the question is what they're going to do with the money. And if they don't uh, repay some of the debts or if they pay out too much in terms of a dividend to show, you know, a high dividend yield and look strong and attractive, 
to newbie investors then that kind of would signal to me that they're probably um, not going to make it over the next couple of shipping cycles, uh, well not shipping cycles but the cycles in general, business cycles. So that's kind of what I'm thinking of Nordic American tankers at this point in time. The risk reward is not favorable. I feel safer with Tarkos Energy Navigation. Um, they do have you know, a lot more debt um, and, a, you know, and a smaller market cap than Nordic American tankers. So you're probably like wondering, well, how on earth is that uh, safer? But it is, it is, uh, believe me. Um, going into you know, the company, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, it and uh, you can of course make up your own mind if if I just come back to, to you know to the overall you know news flow they redeemed some of the preferred shares the B series uh, I don't know where it is but it's somewhere probably still in this news feed there you go redeem 50 million of 8% uh, preferred shares and recently they um, issued 35 millions of series G shares they have a, a you know a coupon of about seven and a half percent and they're convertible so mm, overall those uh, securities kind of signal that when they were issued that there was uh, some bullishness building in this stock and that the people who are uh, you know buying these preferred shares they were considering to you know convert them into common stock when you know when the common stock is performing really strongly so that's kind of um, where it's at they like to use these uh, preferred shares but um, going now to the company's website, we will see some interesting stuff. So they're talking about leading growth continuously. And if you scroll down here, you can see their fleet here. It's kind of telling you how many ships they have, but it doesn't really go into the age. It, the age is given in the the fleet section here, where you can see also where it was built, what the sizes and everything, and the different vessel types. Um, yeah, if you want to check that out, of course, just go to their website, 10 with two N's dot gr. Um, down here, what else do they have? They talk about 25 years of continuous growth. I, I think they've been in business longer than 25 years because somehow I feel like this is an old poster. Yeah, something like that. So, getting into the company, um, about them, they talk about their. This is a bit outdated if you look at it. They talk about, um, th you know, their capital structure too, and there's the the asset base and and you know what their business is and you can see here they talk about the series B which was redeemed as I just showed then they have um, the series E here but they haven't mentioned the series F and the series G that has been recently issued so that's kind of like out of date there's some more stuff here if you are interested then going to the committee charters this is very important that's why I have these two open here they have the code of ethics and the insider trading policy. These are two very important documents that are, you know, they give some trust because it kind of outlines what the directors are not supposed to do. And if if they did do it, they can't like say, well, nobody for forbade it. And that's kind of very important that they should act ethically, not compete with the company. And then here, insider trading, they should not uh, use material information. Blah 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 blah. Um. I kind of looked over this uh, a long time ago and when I read it it was uh, you know to my satisfaction so I'm not going to really go over it and read it again if you're interested of course you should read these kind of documents I think though the most important thing that I can you know point out that is not like on the website and kind of intuitively is this video here on YouTube um, it's uh, you know it talks it has um, this guy here, this is Michael Jolliffe, and this is uh, Nicholas Bornosis. He, he, you know, Nicholas Bornosis is from Capital Link, and uh, Michael Jolliffe, he is from Tarkos Energy Navigation. I can just go over the management, of course, too, give a, a little snapshot. That's him here, Michael Jolliffe. Then you have uh, all these other people here. The founder, of course, Nicholas Tarkos. Um, Michael Jolliffe was co-founder, of course, too. That's uh, why he's important. Then you have, um, you know, some officers down here. I think they're actually the same people as we have up there. Maybe not this. Uh, this guy's like the only one who's not showing up because he's there and he's the CEO. This guy, I have no idea, but, you know, it doesn't even have a picture. But anyway, uh, important thing to note is that these guys are all in Greece. That's where the company is headquartered. They're incorporated in Bermuda to not pay any income taxes, of course. And um, 
you know this this, this is kind of where it's that um there in Greece they don't like really have strong sun tan so they're not like on the beach sipping uh pina coladas or whatever all day long but now getting back to uh this interview here with um you know capital link guy and uh michael Jolliffe. this is in 2018 when we're seeing some strength in the um in the tanker market when opec was um was increasing their supplies again and you know if you listen this guy he's trying to like pump the case for shipping he's like saying you know this the reason why you want to have shipping is kind of what his message is and he's asking questions to michael jolliffe and he's just giving him like straight answers objective answers and if you listen to to michael jolliffe you get insights into the um you know into what he's thinking how he's thinking he's a very conservative person and that kind of reflects in the corporate strategy he goes into the uh, accretive charters that i mentioned in my previous videos um he goes into the the strategy of the accretive charters finding clients and then you know getting accretive charters and then you know ordering the ships and then when they are delivered they start you know earning all this money and that is kind of what it really comes down to so if you are interested in this company the first thing to do is you know instead of spending your time reading the annual report which you can do by you know going here invest relation annual reports you should um you know listen to michael jolliffe in this interview and if you feel good about the company then you should go into um, the annual reports look at the fleet you know come out come up with a valuation and decide whether four dollars per share is is attractive to you or not uh, i'm not going to tell you in terms of what i think the pricing is at this point in time i've kind of pointed out that i feel more comfortable in this one than in this one at this point in time and that might change in the future depending upon price developments and uh, the company developments but i think this is kind of where it's at looking at the relative performance that we achieve over the longer time with our investments looking at the companies that we uh you know are interested in interested in being invested in over a longer period of time is also very important so i'm going to leave it with that um for today just remember that you can share your opinions questions and comments in the comment section under this video if you like this kind of videos you are welcome to subscribe and that's going to do it for today have a good day